pyramid of why Surrender is such a strong pick, why so many people put faith in him for packs. But uh, coming up, we have two players who also have a lot of packs and hopes behind them too. Nerea from Ukraine is going to be quite the fearsome opponent against Frozen. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just start welcome them. No time to waste. Let's meet our first player from Ukraine. Please welcome Naria. Naria competed in two of the seasonal championships this year and wants to put a punctuation mark on it for the world championship. His opponent, runner-up in the winter championship from the United States of America. Please welcome Frozen. Frozen's lineup is considered one of the most impressive by the rest of the field. Frozen versus Nairea. I, I haven't prepared that much yet for him. Nairea has the exact lineup that I target. The, the most challenging is for, for me would be to win with Agro Droid, I think. I'm very favored, close to 60% versus his lineup. Frozen versus Nairea. Ready? Set, go! Hello everybody and welcome back to the 2017 Hearthstone World Championship. We're about to get underway with Frozen versus Nyria. Uh, I'm TJ joined by the Admiral. That's admirable. How you doing? Pretty good. Oh yeah? Last match was exciting. Tell me yeah. about it. Game five was a little bit of a blowout, I, I must say, but uh, the rest of the series was, was pretty gosh darn good. Yeah, pretty good. But, uh, you know, this one is uh, is big in many ways. And one of those, uh, well, I was going to say, is the Control Mage. And that's one of the things that Frozen brought that not a lot of other players did. We saw Sinto earlier today play it. Uh, it was one of the unique decks that he brought as well. But Nairi is actually going to go and ban that away and leave up the Cube Warlock, which is pretty bold considering that the Cube Warlock also has good matchups against this deck. This is... This is a rough situation for Nyria. Well, that's what makes the matchup favored for Frozen in this instance, is that he's got two very strong decks against the standard lineup that a lot of players chose to bring. I think from Nyria's perspective, uh, he can justify the Cube Warlock ban, largely because of uh, the fact that there's the Carnivorous Cubes and the Doom Guards inside that deck. So his aggressive pushes won't always be stopped by a Possessed Lackey. Sometimes uh, Frozen will find himself getting a Doom Guard, or maybe just having a cluttered hand full of, of five costs and, and higher cards. And in that kind of situation, Nyria can get an aggressive push going. But we're starting off with the classic matchup, the Highlander Priest versus Tempo Rogue from Nyria. And it's really important for Nyria, I think, to get some pressure on board and really clock the life total of Frozen. I think throughout this tournament, we've seen players fail to do that, and it's come up quite costly, I think. And I love Nyria's list uh, against Highlander Priest as a rogue list. He's got a double Elven Minstrel and double Cobalt Scalebane. And those are two of the cards that you want against Highlander Priest a lot of the times. Cobalt Scalebane provides pressure. It's also a dragon, so it's invulnerable to dragon fire potion. Elven Minstrel is just sort of a necessary tool to refill your hand with minions uh, to keep up your pressure. Yeah, and being being stacked against Highlander Priest is something that you can see through a, a lot of Nyria's choices uh, throughout his lineup. You know, you talked about the ones with Tempo Rogue, <laughs> but also looking at his Aggro Druid deck, he's got a copy of Cobalt Scalebane and a Vicious Fledgling for added pressure. In his Highlander Priest deck, he's opted for Gadgets and Auctioneer over Lyra. And That's here, right. he's got a counterfeit coin to, to compound the pressure here. It, with, with this Edwin Van Cleave, I'm curious if you'd rather get the dragon online sooner or if you'd rather just make a big Edwin and put Frozen to the test. Well, a lot of times, uh, you know, there's two ways that a Highlander Priest uh, deals with a big Edwin. And one is Shadow of Death, two is Silence. Uh, earlier on in the game, uh, later on, of course, you can have Psychic Scream or Shadow Reaper Anduin. Uh, so, you know, putting them on those two cards this early it's usually better to do that early than it is to do it later on in the game, but Frozen does have the answer. He's got the Shadow of Death. And he's going for it. Wow. I, I mean, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, if the Rogue God flush you with his hand, you, you take the option and pay the price when it happens. Uh, but for Nyria, this is, this is not the same start that he had against Frozen in Bahamas after the Shadow of Death comes out. You know, this is a rematch from there where Nyria was up three games to one versus Frozen and eventually lost the match. That, that was best of seven in Bahamas, and he couldn't quite close it out. Yeah. I wonder if that's playing through their mind, that rematch. But I, I remember thinking back, and I saw Frozen smirk when he used that Shadow Word Death, and that happened a lot back in the Bahamas when these two guys played against each other. Well, 
Uh, it's not the most fantastic start for Nyria. His turn four is looking awfully grim. Unless he picks up something, but even if he picks up Elven Minstrel, he's nothing to combo with. That's really the thing with Edwin, is like when you go all in on an Edwin push and it doesn't work, it is it is a giant colossal impact that, that's oh, made. It, he gets a circle of healing so he can get a couple additional cards since he res the Northshire Cleric with his one mana potion. It's the only minion he could res from that. I like the choice from Frozen to go for the one mana, utilize the Radiant Elemental. He's just had the early game to really put Nyria in check. And it's it's gonna get compounded from here. And Nyria does have a little bit of a board, so Cobalt's gaming might be able to land uh, that effect on something, but at any time Frozen's got the ability to, to clear the board away with Dustbreaker. And uh just gonna keep playing on curve though, dragging it operative. This is another reason why Frozen was saying earlier on that oh, he's in trouble. That, <laughs> That like he's favored uh, in this matchup, or in this matchup overall against Cyrus, because Dragon Highlander Priest is just a little bit greedier than regular Highlander Priest. Yeah. It, it also, like the added pressure is, is so necessary versus uh, matchups like like uh, Nyria's Rogue, where the pressure on board matters just about more than anything. So because of that, it's important to just have access to, to stuff like Twilight Dream, have access to uh, Draconid Operative, just helps you fight. Second Kazakis. Man, I, he took that potion awfully fast. Frozen is feeling good. Wow. Deal five damage, keep your minions four health. Look at that board. That's about all she wrote. Frozen seems like he's been on autopilot throughout the beginning of this matchup, but he's been playing on point. Frozen actually, he, he see the look at Iria. He just kind of looks up to the sky like, yeah. is there any way out of this? Probably not, and he realizes it and concedes. That means Frozen takes a quick Game number one. And mind you, a lot of the tech choices from Nyria are a bit focused towards that matchup. Yeah. So the fact that Frozen was able to put together such a strong hand and win that quick early game, I think things could get tough for Nyria. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, Frozen just was exuding confidence, not even just throughout the interview that we saw earlier, but throughout the week, talking to him, him talking to other players. He just feels like he next leveled the entire field here. And a lot of people are agreeing with him, but uh, we'll have to see if that trend is going to continue frozen as a 1-0 lead. Will Nyria be able to bring this one back? We'll find out right after this. My name is Frozen, and I play Hearthstone competitively. I'm actually in Beijing for GCWC right now, and apart from playing competitively, I organize Hearthstone tournaments for Titan Art, and I used to swim competitively. I think swimming taught me how to grind through everything, and that hard work really pays off. In Hearthstone, I'm one of the well-known grinders for ladder, where I can just play nonstop for many days and get high rank. For the first DreamHack I played in, DreamHack Sweden, I was teamless and I kind of just went to Sweden on my own. My parents weren't very happy since they were traditional Asian parents and they tried their best to dissuade me, but I had a few decks that I was really confident in where nobody played at the time and I was able to finish second and I think after that tournament it was the first time my parents realized that Hearthstone competitively can actually be a self-sufficient way for me to live my life. I think deck building is one of my better skills and leading the meta as well. I will use a lot of software to figure out the best lineup and through previous tournaments results to find what decks I think will be the best. My goal for this World Championship is first place and it is very important for next year because of how much points it, it carries over and it will give me a head start for my region. My goal is to win the World Championship. I will try my best every single year until I reach it.
Pull up a chair by the hearth, and welcome to Amsterdam! This is the Hearthstone World Championship! Welcome back, Tavern Goers, to the Hearthstone World Championship. I'm TJ, joined by That's Admirable. We're about to jump into game number two of Frozen versus Nyria. Currently, Frozen has the lead one to zero. But he's going up against a Titan. After qualifying for two seasonal championships, Nyria's 2017 may just become one of the greatest years in Hearthstone's history. My 2017 is going well so far. And now Nyria, he's got the win. Yep, Nyria is going to the top eight. I got uh, pretty good results, just consistent results. This is back-to-back -back championship appearances for Nyria. I'm kind of happy that it qualified second time, but at the same time, my end goal is always to win the world championship, right? Other players should be worried because they should not expect mistakes from me. Nyria, cool, calm, and collected. This looks like it's another day at the office. I would say until I get the World Championship title, I wouldn't be satisfied. But even after then, I would, I'll would i probably find some other goals. Maybe not. I'll find out if I win. <laughs> His only goal is to win the World Championship until he either wins or finds a new one. <laughs> That's after he wins. Right? <laughs> yeah, after he wins. Yeah, I would say he's at the top. I just really no doubt that Nyria had such a great 2017. I mean, just his, his overall consistent performance has always been there throughout his Hearthstone career. I would say his 2016 um, hurt a little bit, mm -hmm. but that's you're going to have those, those years if you are playing full-time Hearthstone as he's been. Um, but it was just such a wonderful pickup for G2. Uh, to add him alongside RDU and Tice that are already on the team. And just, you look at the amount of titles and the amount of success they've had. The one big question standing for Nyria is can he win on the big stage? And he's won plenty of times before, but he's never taken home that big title. And that's the, the big question here. And uh, we're going to get into it. Game number two is the Cube Warlock uh, from Frozen. This is the full blown Cube Warlock. This is with the Doom Guard package. Um, so. It, He's not guaranteed, of course, from that possessed lackey to get Void Lord like, we, uh, like we've been seeing uh, from some players throughout the tournament. And I, th I think that's the one reason why Nyria chose to ban the Control Mage from Frozen Sorry. rather than ban out the Warlock is, is the fact that possessed lackey can summon a Doom Guard and leave him le uh, vulnerable to lethal damage is a big factor for Nyria. He's considered all those options through and through, and Kaliseth is step number one to really helping that. You know, you look at Frozen's hand, he's got Mortal Coil, he's got Defile, he's got ways to buff those spells up. He's got the Mistress on one. So much of this deck is dedicated to early defense. And so for Nyria, he needs those extra buffs to get that pressure going because he should expect his minions to die quite often. Yeah, and this matchup can get pretty tough for the Rogue. A lot of times you got to kill them before they get that Void, void Lord train rolling. Oh, yeah. Um, because as soon as you, you knock on the door of that turn yeah, 10, you're looking at Blood Ruby Dan. Uh, as a as a big way for them to just solidify themselves on the board, um, you know, even at, by turn six, you need to have at least a decent place on the board because that's the possessed lackey dark pack turn, uh, and that's when things can get a little bit sketchy. Well, this this game's gonna get quite sketchy, I'd say as well. I mean, Frozen's got a doomsayer in hand, he's got a spellstone he just drew to, that he can start buffing up. I'll be curious to see how he plays this because he can blow up just about everything in a row that Nyria is going to play. Yeah, and it, this is why it feels like an uphill battle for, for Nyria's decks. Frozen, even in this, uh, I guess you could call it greedier cube warlock with Doom Guards instead of just the Void Lords, he still runs a Doomsayer. He still runs a Galaka Crawler and a Tainted Zealot, which are all helpful tools for dealing with early, aggra uh, more aggressive decks like Temple Rogue or Aggro Druid, which Nyria has in his lineup. And this is a really cool move that I think Frozen's made here, uh, delaying the Doomsayer. Uh, turn four for Rogue is typically fairly weak, and even in the instance where Nyria has Sarnite Chain Gang, he's going to be able to Mortal Coil off the uh, the SI7 agent if it trades, and then set the Doom Guard as well. So it occupies uh, some time for Nyria on that turn five and just starts building towards the big Defile turns, the big swing turns with Possessed Lackey. And that's really a problem for, for Nyria in the long term. It also helps him... Uh, draw cards, just figure out what he wants his game plan to be, and has a nice answer to Corridor Creeper since the trades have been going on. The problem I'm seeing for Nyria right now, though, is just his heavy hand. You know, Edwin wants to be coupled with something. Minstrel wants to be coupled with something. So does Vile Spine, and so does Bone Bear. So if he runs out of pressure, it's probably not coming back. 
weird to say, but Firefly is probably the best draw for, for it, an enemy at this point. It allows him to just keep uh, getting those combos along. Thinking Swashburglar, thinking Firefly. Yeah, uh, one thing to note about Nyria's list is he does only have one copy of Swashburglar. In the list, which is not a card that a lot of players uh, tend to cut, but with double Southsea deckhand and, uh, du uh, and uh, a single Southsea captain, uh, he's he feels like he's able to get patches reliably enough. And, and this play right here from Frozen is one of the reasons you've been seeing a lot of spellbreakers make their way into aggro rogue list is they get possess lackey coin against them and there's not really much of an answer. In, in the open deck format, Frozen has been able to plan to do this in the matchup, and so he could play it without fear, knowing that Nyria does not have access to silence. And there's a lot of math going on right here. Uh, Nyria is trying to best play around a defile while also trying to best make sure that he has the best chances against whatever's going to come out uh, from this possessed lackey. Does he attack face first and then just deal with the board lord straight up? Does he attack with one of his minions, make his board breaker to defile, but then have a way to answer board lord like he just did? There's a lot going on with that turn. And now with the 1-3s the behind, Frozen has to just simply evaluate. Well, he, How often do I get Vile Spine Slayer by Doomsayer? Can I just trade the board out? He's got so many resources to work with. And I fear that Nyria is just going to get choked out of the game. Yeah, De Defile plus Doomsayer is the play that jumps out at me the most. Drawn card seems to be one of Frozen's priorities. Yeah. What's missing from this hand that isn't currently here? I'm looking at the list, and I'm wondering, because it's, it's been so good for him so far. All he has to do is buy time to the Blood Reaper cooldown, I think. I love Nemzi. <laughs> Frozen's looking very focused as well. I think this this is might be the most focused I think I've ever seen Frozen in a match. You know, I think back to Bahamas, he had a couple moments where you would look at his play and you'd go, ooh, I don't know about that one. Well, uh, he, he makes a lot of weird plays. He kind of reminds me, uh, which is funny because, you know, they, they share a similar path in Shandudachi, who makes a lot of lines that but players don't necessarily spot right away. And they were the two finalists from winter. Um, and uh, watching their series, which was a best of seven back then, was pretty intense uh, because of the fact that you really just never know what they're going to do. You expect the play to come out, like, you know, Miles were on Defile plus Doomsayer there to go into an, the next turn, but he just thinks that step ahead. He says, well, I don't really have a play to follow up Doomsayer, so let me draw a card to see if that play is going to get better. And then a Spellbreaker on a South Sea Captain to play on curve and to get a card out of his hand. Yeah. Uh, those, those types of things are not plays that, you know, the majority of players would make, I don't think. I was just having trouble keeping up with the speed that Shanudaji was playing at in winter. <laughs> I mean, you blinked and his turn was over. <laughs> and, and then you blinked again and the tournament was over. <laughs> I noticed Nyria not playing the Edwin here would set up uh, the absolute dream defile for Frozen. So he foregoes it to look for a better spot. If he can keep something on board here, you know, maybe he gets a lower value defile from Frozen, he gets to keep an extra card. If he doesn't get that defile from Frozen, then it means he has a minion left over sometimes for yeah. Bone Mare. But one of the things to, to uh, also keep in mind is um, Frozen may be trying to force Nyria to think that he doesn't have a Defile. Um, or he could also just be trying to be greedy with this Defile, knowing that it'll always be in a pretty decent spot, especially the later turns that, that you go with. Uh, Tainted Zealot, there's, there's really no really good way to play around it. Yeah, that was actually, he said that's why he included it over Blood yeah. Mage, was that the, the first effect of two damage, and then the second effect of two damage. If that killed two minions, it would then yield the, the fifth damage to kill Corridor Creepers. And that was yeah. a big target of Frozen's in this tournament. He, he's actually, I, th I think he's the only player in the tournament who has not brought any Corridor Creepers throughout his lineup uh, with Frozen. Yeah. Faceless Manipulator just to keep stalling time. It's been such a wise use of his tools. He's using the, the harder to use tools first so they can have these premium board sweeps if, if he needs it. Yeah, Faces Manipulator a lot of times is used in uh, the slower matchups to make their turns more awkward. Uh, you can Faces Manipulator a Carnivorous Cube that you would use to eat a Doom Guard. That's and the that, dream. That, that is the dream. 
Um, and that, you know, wrecks a lot of the slower control decks. But against a tempo rogue, you do have to play for tempo. You can't fall too far behind. Yeah. And uh, this is exactly what he's trying to do by, uh, by copying that over. Well, those would have been good. Um, I'd say a little bit earlier. Maybe. But now, there he Pretty good spot for Nyree, though, I'd say. Yeah, he's still presenting a strong board. He's rolling into a Bone Mare turn. He, he also has South Sea Deckhand plus Bone Mare as a way to just deal instant damage and get immediate value. So this will also require a lot of attention for Frozen if he wants to clear this board. Like, I actually, with this particular hand, I'm, I'm not sure he can do it. Well, he's got Tainted Zealot Defile. Just attack it with the Spellbreaker. Tainted Zealot Defile clears. Uh, I know, you uh, would. You would miss the last tick. You would have to use his uh, his his spellstone to do it. He would spellstone on the Edwin, run the yeah. um, spellbreaker into the four five, and then defile afterwards. So it looks like it's the kobold and spellstone is looks like it's where he's aiming, but gosh, this was a great setup from Nyria. It made it, he tried to make the turn as awkward as possible for Frozen, and every single step of the way threatening Bone Bear. And since Frozen didn't see Bone Bear last turn, he just he may believe that Nyree just doesn't have it. The Minstrel could change things, though. There we go. This might be the first breakaway that Nyree has gotten the whole game. But he hasn't chipped away much so far. Frozen still at a, at a very healthy 29 health. But notice, though, that Frozen doesn't have a hard removal in his hand. He just used a uh, 7... Uh, damage spell stone. So I think this is Nyria's opportunity. If he's gonna if he's gonna get something going, I, this is the turn. I, I mean, Frozen with running this version of the Warlock doesn't have you know too much hard removal. He does not have Siphon Souls. He does not have Twisting Nether. His removal is basically Hellfire and Defile. That's that's about it. And of course, uh, as you just saw. Uh, the Spellstone. I mean, yeah, it looks like he's he's aiming with this South Sea Deckhand, too. Wipe out the Spellbreaker, wipe out the 2-1. Let's say, deal with this. Yeah, the, this is about as good as he can wow. play around Defile by keeping the small minions off the board and keeping the health on his minions that are on the board rather high. Side effects? No. Trust Only me. a fool rejects the Lich King. It's going to clear a lot off the board, but that Doomsayer can still be cleared. At the very least, though, it's a, it's a seven uh, health heal. This is a good reload from Nyria, though. I mean, he just saw a lot from Frozen used. The big problem that uh, that I think Nyria runs into is that even if he handles the Void Lord well, then he's staring down Blood Reaper Blood Cooldown. Blood Reaper which brings back two Void Lords. Uh, well, actually... Not necessarily. There's a chance that there could only be one Void Lord, because at that point... Uh, you know, as if Nyria does clear off all the, the board walkers or has something to trade them in, there'll be six board walkers. This is the all-in turn, though. Two, in, uh, two void lords in the pool. So you hold the Vile Spine Slayer for anticipation of void lord in this spot. Yeah. You hope that Frozen doesn't have a way to clear out your board. You're looking at Hellfire uh, being the real big hit that he would take. And you're hoping he doesn't have void lord. But if he does, you have Vile Spine Slayer. Is this enough to push through? Scale Bean's a great card to add to a board full of little stuff. If he had not played the Fell Guard, he would have three less damage this turn, but he would be able to get the Scale Bane down. Oh, that's off the combo. That actually seems pretty enticing. Of course, there's no way to know he's drawing Scale Bane next turn. You gotta trust in the heart of the card, Jack. <laughs> I think it's also quite important here for Nyree to be using the Tar Creeper to attack. So that way he can try and mitigate, you know, maybe another Defile later on. Let's leave him with a board with two health, four health, five, and six. So that, that key three is missing. All right, well, this is the big test. Is Blood River Gul'dan enough? Two Void Lords is what Frozen wants to see, but yeah. A shake of the head from Nyria. One Void Lord. 
mean, that's still a lot of health. That's a lot of health, but that's a pretty big deal. Two uh, things to add to the board as well with the Sarnak Chain Gang pickup. So now Nyria's just got to figure out the most efficient way to bust through this Void Lord and the remaining Void Walkers afterwards. Well, only only one Void Walker uh, uh, spawns from this Void Lord. There's still seven more on There's board. There's seven afterwards. more, but there. Have you played against Spreading Plague, TJ? This is a much tougher Spreading Plague <laughs> to get done, and it's, it's less health. And it's still good. Spreading Void. But uh, the, the thing is, is that he doesn't have to weaken his minions with the uh, three damage Void. He can just uh, soften them up with the uh, one damage uh, Void Walkers. So that's actually a big deal. A lot of times, Warlocks survive with pretty little health. It's a, a, lot of, a pretty close matchup when it comes down to it. And now Frozen with both Duke Guards in his hand, Possessed Lackey plus Darkback all of a sudden it doesn't pull anything. And Carn the Doom Guard plus Carnivorous Cube is much harder to use. Really the only thing he can do in his hand next turn is Spellstone Doom Guard, but playing a Doom Guard onto this board and discarding some of the stuff that's in your hand, this is tough. Wow. I'm quite surprised Nyria goes to the Chain Gang over oh, the... Uh... Oh my. That is a... Uh, That's full clear. Um, you attack one of the board walkers into the fell guard. There's one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's a, that's really bad news for Nyria. Mm. That's a full clear. I mean, Frozen's down to seven cards in the deck. And then he has yet to draw a Hellfire either, so there's two more Hellfires in here that would put a big hurt on uh, Nyria's board as well. Run the... Voidwalkers into the Chain Gang, Hellfire, Eat the Corridor Creeper. Still some pressure on the opposing side of the board, but he's at 20. My hunger Nyria's goes. just saying, please dodge the Defile. But nope. I must yep. Yep. There's one of the Doom Guards, but a cube and a Dark Pack stay. Yeah, a cube is the one that he wanted to see. Ooh. Uh, well, actually, actually, either of them was what he wanted to see. That's just, oh, yeah, that's, that's lethal. game. Yep. You plus the Dark Pack will be enough. I was even looking at Nyria's health. He's at nine. <laughs> he got quite low early on, but that means Frozen takes game number two. Nyria had a lot of pressure at the end, but wasn't able to overcome. Blood Reaper pulled in. Right, and that 2 0 lead is going to be really tough to break through. However, I have been saying it throughout this tournament, and I still. We'll say it. With Jade Druid remaining, I think Frozen is still at a bit of disadvantage, although his Jade Druid has a twist. His Jade Druid does have a twist. Is the Violet Teacher uh, with Oaken Summons, uh, Jade Druid. So a little bit of an interesting dynamic uh, with the deck as opposed to the Ironwood Golem. It has uh, more aggressive tools. And I'll take a look at what's happening around the rest of the tavern here at the Hearthstone World Championship. Some Hearthstone Battleship. Uh, taking place. Someone's jamming some games at the same time, though. Oh, look who's there! That that looks a lot like a previous uh, a world champion to me, Admirable. Yeah, I believe I believe uh, Firebat is his name. Suck my fiery bat. You take a point. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see if Nyria can come back in this 2-0 deficit. We'll be back right after this. enjoying the event so far. It's not been going on for long, but... I feel really honored that it's also here in the Netherlands. So one time now having the World Championship in Europe and the Netherlands is just really awesome. And yeah, just happy to be here and see so many people also coming already out just on day one. It's pretty nice. It's like a very big place here. So big, you can very easily get lost. I know I've been wandering around the building for a while. Security giving me terrible looks. No idea where I'm going. <laughs> All right, so my next question is, are there any wild cards? Maybe any players that... Um, aren't as popular, aren't as well known, who you think might have a chance of taking away this tournament? I think everyone here has a chance to take the tournament for sure. Like everyone here is of 
really good caliber and has been doing very, very well. Yeah. I think um, a lot of people might not know Tom60229 as well, but that guy has been winning like everything for the last two years. And today, actually. And today, yeah. <laughs> he's from the Asian scene, so over here in the European scene and the American scene, we don't know you hear his name or know him too well, but that guy has been on fire for a while, so I wouldn't be surprised to see him just doing extremely well here. Yeah. I think all the 16 players, they have proven like it was definitely not easy to already qualify for the regionals. No. I think they all have proven that they can do it. Might be a lot of pressure here, so maybe there will be some players that are gonna struggle with that, but I think they all have like at least already uh, that they can prove they are here for a good reason. My peak is also Tom. I, I, play, a lot really? of, wow. I play a lot of ladder on Asia. And uh, Tom is crazy consistent there. Like I have him in my friend list and I always see him in like top 10, top 20. I was at a lot of tournaments with him that he performed really well in. He's also winning like crazy amount of tournaments before even qualifying for here. And here he like qualified uh, for like one of the championships, but he also was number one in points. So he had that secured anyways. It's crazy consistency from him. And I think he's like probably the most underrated player in the tournament. And uh, if Neria doesn't win, he's gonna be Tom. <laughs> okay, but so final, final words. Winner of the tournament will be Neria Tom. Neria Tom. Nairia first. Nairia Tom then Tom. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, purple first, and then Muzzy, then Tom. Okay. I'm going to go Colento first, just for because I can. Because and uh, and Fro I think Frozen can do it too. I have Frozen on second. Talking to some of the players over the last couple of days, some of them have been saying they think Frozen has the best lineup. Some of them have been saying they think Doc Pone has the best lineup, which I thought was particularly interesting. I don't like the Doc Pone lineup, to no? be honest. No. I don't like it either. Doc Phone went on uh, HS Replay and found the decks with the highest win rate and then took those in order, which is a strategy that I think is very good. So he's expecting people to overthink, and he, I think he's going to do well because of that. I think it's a great strategy to have for some of these high-pressure events is keep it simple. My name is Frozen. I am from Norfolk, Michigan. I play Hearthstone nine hours a day. Well, actually the longest stretch was 36 hours. My favorite food is sushi. Before I play in a big tournament, I usually eat healthy and sleep well. Welcome back everybody to the Hearthstone World Championship. You just heard Frozen say that he played Hearthstone for 36 hours straight. That's not how a day works, is it? <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, but he's dedicated to his craft, man. He, he is dedicated. Right now, he's up 2-0 against Nyria. And uh, he brought an interesting lineup. You know, a lot of players said that uh, after speaking with Frozen, after looking at all 16 lineups um, in a vacuum, they thought that Frozen was the one who thought one step ahead of everybody else in the field. Yeah, I, Naria actually had, had tweeted out that he was working on some stuff for Worlds. His actual quote was, was working on interesting stuff for Worlds, but couldn't manage to optimize it well enough. So submitted regular decks that I had ready for two weeks. Pretty disappointed in myself. That was an actual quote from him on his Twitter. And the first person he's got to play against is the guy in the field who everyone agrees went the next level and brought the best lineup. And when I say everyone, the players in the tournament is what yeah. I mean by that. And Tice. And Tice. Not Firebat, though. Nope. Keep it simple. Bring the best decks. All right, well, let's get into it. It's going to be the Jade Druid from Frozen uh, versus this Aggro Druid from Nyria. Ooh. Now, uh, we talked about it, but the Jade Druid from Frozen is a, a little bit different. Violet Teacher. It also runs Mark of the Lotus uh, in that one spell slot. So it's, it's sort of less defensive, but it uses offense as a defense, I guess you could say, because when you use Oaken Summons, you get the Violet Teacher, and then you can make a little bit of a bigger board with the Innervate, Mark of the Lotus, things like that. And that can fight against aggro as opposed to just one taunt. Yeah, he's, re he's really brought a different angle of attack here, where rather than just having to rely on super late game, uh, he wants to get it going a little bit earlier with Violet Teacher potential. Now, that's, that can sometimes punish him in an effect where uh, he doesn't have the late game potential that he would normally have, but it certainly can speed things up. And there, that Jasper Spellstone is a critical draw. Whoa. Whoa. I, okay. I don't know about this one, TJ. He could have Jasper Spells on here, powered down the Vicious Fledgling, rolled into Violet Teacher, and then do stuff. But this way, he gets the Violet Teacher on the board when it's not being contested by anything. Right, but 
it's a vicious sledgling. I, I mean, this card is meant to punish the one time you can't kill it because your deck is slow on board presence. Yeah, Frozen's like, ah, the, this thing gets. Never win Fury. This might kill him. <laughs> it's basically lethal Not damage. this turn, but... That has to be the scariest minion in the game to not kill for a turn. When you're at 30. Well, there, there is the, you know, chance that Nyria kills the Violet Teacher. There is almost 0% chance, I think, that he kills this Violet Teacher. It's scary. If he gets Wind Fury, maybe there's a chance he kills it. Well, there's stealth. There's no stealth. I'm sorry. Po I, why did I say stealth? The poisonous. So, it, at the very least now, the stealth was stealth. <laughs> the good one, admirable. Thanks, Teej. Snyria so loads up and says, do you want to kill it now? Wow, worked out beautifully. He got rewarded. Yeah, Took a risk. This is a big reward for Frozen. If, if you think about it, though, the chances of him to get Stealth or Wind Fury is not the largest. And you have a follow-up if he misses both of those. And then Corridor Creeper gets drawn. So I think this is Nyria's big turn. I think he's got to move in here. Yeah. But this Violet Teacher's got to die because once you get to these later turns... Uh, is he killing it, really? I, I think you have to. All right. Yeah. I can respect that. When you get to turn five, all of a sudden he has a couple cheap spells. He draws Mark of the Lotus. He has a four a four cross spell plus Mark of the Lotus. You're in trouble. Two branching paths to try to give Frozen some time, some extra cards. Ooh, that's a yikes. Yeah. If he had drawn something that he could play next turn or something good, he probably would have gone for armor on the second one. Uh, but drawing that ultimate infestation meant that he needed to dig deeper in his deck. He also has the second branching paths to be able to gain armor uh, in a pinch. Well, Corridor Creeper is going to put a big hurt on that Jade Behemoth as well. This is going to be tough for Frozen still. He had no ramp in the early game. He had to use both Jasper Spell Stones to try and buy time early on. Well, he does have a ton of armor. Oh, my. Mark of the Lotus. That, that might be all she wrote. Nyria is about to make a colossally big board. He can push 11 damage this turn. No Crypt Lord either. Uh, spreading Plague very much on the front of his mind. Yeah, Crypt Lord, that extra two damage not really going to make a difference. His board is already pretty protected. And uh, he's got more than enough damage for lethal next turn. That one just probably goes face. What does that play around? Swipe. Does it? Swipe plus Jasper Spellstone. Yeah, Otherwise, he Jasper's kill left. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's true. Yeah. Well, we'll see if Malfury can get it done. Next turn, he could go Jade Blossom, Jade Idol, Branching Pass, Double Armor, and then into Ultimate Infestation, but I just don't think it's enough. He gains 12 next turn. And then gains 5 the following turn, so he gains 17 over the next two turns, but... I mean, it's possible, but it's unlikely. We've been seeing the unlikely happen quite a bit throughout this tournament. Yeah, there's a, there's actually just going to be enough damage on the board. Uh, there's 16, 17 with the hero power. Uh, he can only go Plague. up to... Plague. Whoa. So Plague into Armor Up, or Plague into Kill a Minion. I think that the Kill a Minion has a lot of upside here. Well, if you go Kill a Minion, then you die to Savage Room. How? You have four guys to play. Oh yeah, you're right. Wow, look at this. Yeah, I Kill a Minion. Because that's less damage in the long run. You gain three armor now, but you have a, another minion on the board that could deal recurring damage. So now Nyria may be in the business of playing the rest of his minions. A, a second spreading plague, I just don't think he's going to beat. And that one came off the top. He knows that. Oh, he's stressed. 
I mean, he's not pushing any damage here through here. And but the, the thing about Frozen is, will he be able to muster up enough for a counter attack? The thing is, you can gain armor for days, but eventually this board that you're not killing, that you're just delaying, is going to kill you regardless. That, that's really the issue is that it, it's just delaying it. Uh, if he was making any real progress here, this this might be okay, but I mean, Frozen, it's looking like he might need a second spreading plague to survive the next turn. Yeah, but then again, it's about can he mount a counterattack. Right now, his next Jade is a 2-2. Two -two. He, he's only played a, a single Jade card so far this game, and... Uh, you know, even ultimate infestation is not going to be enough in a few turns. The 12 armor is not even enough. Let's see, he can gain 15 armor this turn. There's plenty of damage, yeah. I think he's dead no matter what he does. Well, it's not quite. Is he not 100% not dead? I think he is 100% dead. It's, it's 15 on board, he gains 15 armor this turn, he lives two. But he's just not making any progress like yeah 16 damage it happens on board. that way so it'd be alive at one I wonder how different this game would have been if Frozen was able to hang on to that innervate at all so if he had gone for the Jasper onto the vicious fledgling and then what does he even draw afterwards that can get him out of this Spreading Plague. I, he's got, I, mean, I don't even think he can ultimate infestation next turn. I think he's got to draw Spreading Plague. Oh my. Well, I Power the Wild's gonna to do it. it. Yep. Nyria puts himself on the board, takes a win with the Aggro Druid. One step closer. And again, this is quite the opposite of what we saw from when these guys played in winter. It's the opposite. It was, uh, it was the other way around. Nyria was on match point, and Frozen came back and won. Now, at Worlds here, Frozen was on match point, and Nyria's put a point on the board. And the Jade Druid, again, that's the deck that I'm worried about for most of the lineups that are out here. Most people had brought a lineup that was strong to, against Jade Druid. But, Nyria does have one of the matchups that Jay Druid is pretty much in the lineup for from Frozen, and that's the Highlander Priest. Jay Druid is considered to be quite a big counter to Highlander Priest. A lot of times uh, they can you know, armor out of range of some of their, their uh, you know, big burst combos later in the game. They can present enough of threats as the game progresses because they basically have no pressure and can Jade as they please. And even Frozen's deck by itself can put a lot of pressure early on in the game with the Violet Teachers instead of the uh, Ironwood Golems uh, once it's summoned by the... Uh... This hand can get good for Nyria awfully quick. And, and honestly, <laughs> something, can, but... some, something that's important to note in this matchup is I don't think that Nyria has this uh, emphasis of trying to kill Frozen as quickly as possible in the matchup. I, I think his major goal is to have uh, one timing attack. So that way he, he lands like uh, you know multiple corridor creepers in the same turn, or he has a spot where he gets multiple threats and then is threatening Bonemare. Bonemare is often enough, uh, a huge enough of a blow to Frozen that uh, it's, it's difficult for him to really recover from that situation. And so for Nyria, the fact that he's got this bit of a slow start, I don't, I don't think is the worst thing in the world. Right, Frozen just used what? his second Jade Idol. Which, which I guess doesn't really surprise in this, me. In this matchup, it, it it doesn't surprise me. You almost never get to a point against Tempo Rogue where you need extra Jade Idols in your deck. A lot of times you just want bigger Jades. And yeah. that Jade Idol needs bigger Jades. Now, if this was Highland versus Highlander Priest, it'd be a much different story. Yeah. You play that second Jade Idol, you're done, <laughs> You're done, unless you're killing them in a couple turns. But these are the kinds of spots that Nairia was looking for now. Frozen is used. Uh, quite a number of cards, and he's working on those two corridor creepers. So it's just a matter of biding his time, and look at the save on the back step here as well. So vital to know that he's going to end up losing one of these two threes very likely anyway. Follow up with the dagger, use the cobalt scale bane, have the back stab for the vile spine slayer. That was where he suffered last game. Yeah. The last road game that is. Yep. Well, he's making things a little bit tougher for Nyria. Nyria went the last play in order to be able to uh, dagger off the 3-3 that traded into one of his Serenite yep. chain gangs. And 
Wise uh, timing to disrupt. Yeah, I think that's why Frozen went ahead and played the Marco Lotus for not as much value as he could have gained, mm. like maybe coupled with Spreading Plague later, because he's playing a Temple matchup. So it's for him, it's about making his opponent's turns as awkward as possible and making the Temple harder to gain from the perspective of Nyria. about the biggest threat that Nyrian's going to hit from Frozen's deck. Uh, no Medivh shenanigans. Ultimate Infestation and Jades are, are about as big as it gets in this deck. Now up to seven mana. We're still a couple turns off of seeing some big power plays, but this is that timing attack right here that I, that I wanted to talk about with Nyria having this much pressure to add to board. Uh, Spreading Plague looks a lot worse into these size minions. I'm curious if he if he's ever in the business of shadow stepping this Edwin, making it as large as he can. So many options. The Whoa. He's going in. Jeepers. Jeepers Creepers. They got a lot cheapers. 10 10 Edwin. Nyria just added 20 power to the board on his sixth turn. One turn. A little bit nervous when they add 20 power to the board in one yeah. turn. <laughs> I'm tapping my foot too. For my foot, it plays Double Corridor, Creeper, Edwin, Shadow Step, Edwin. <laughs> Add a couple of scale to the mix, and Frozen is looking like he's going to be pretty dead pretty soon. Drew just does not deal well with this type of board. Yes, wide and, and small, but... The, the big thing to note here was that Nyria's opening hand was, was close to nothing. It was two Corridor Creepers and a Sarnite Chain Gang. Nothing happened in the early game. It was the timing of the pressure that made the difference. There's a reason why Corridor Creeper has you know, such a high win rate when kept in a lot of matchups uh, in the opening hand is, is because of the fact that you're going to make that big swing turn and there's very little decks that can deal with big swing turns like that. He will be able to get Ultimate Infestation out, but I... There's 27 points of power still yeah. remaining on board after that. Well, double swipe plus the Jasper Spellstone actually has a ton of removal. Plus second spreading plate that he can use to sort of soften up the board. He, he's definitely still in this. I mean, Ultimate Infestation is a, a heck of a card. He's trying to think if he if he puts the uh, one one into the six three uh, vile spine slayer oh. double swipe on the quarter oh, creepers. Just look at him. Wait wait wait. wait. Edwin Van. Yeah, if he puts into the Edwin, then double swipe plus the Jasper spellstone should be enough to clear it off. I wonder if Nyria is even going to think to play around that much removal. Twenty nine damage available for Nyria this turn. That doesn't really, does that account for the, the Sarnate Chain Gang absorbing one of this, these attacks as well? No. Yeah, it does actually. He can clear out both quarter of Creepers plus the, the, the Edwin. How does he clear the Edwin? Wow. We have to double swipe it and the quarters are still alive. The uh, Jasper Spellstone. Oh, you're right. It gets buffed up even if you draw it after, too. Yeah, it gets buffed up by the ultimate infestation. I, I just can't remember if it was procced before. Because he hasn't played another armor spell. It might still be at the four damage point. Because right now he's just played... How many times is he hero powered? I don't remember. I knew there was something I wasn't tracking this game. You can even just spreading plague to soften everything up, and I think that's, that's going to be step one. I think, yeah. But that's that's still. I mean, this is heaps of damage he's facing down still. Yeah. Got 
got a lot it's of gotta, It's got to be 12 armor, armor right? <laughs> He's got enough cards. He can give his, he can give his minions plus Whoa. one attack, and that, again, softens him up. So he gives his minions plus one attack and gains the armor because he knows that he's not going to be dead if he doesn't gain the armor twice. And this way, double swipe's just going to be that much better because if these quarter creepers go in, all of a sudden they're at two health, which means double swipe is going to kill them even if it's targeted yeah. at a bigger minion like the Edwin Magley. This is, this is a brilliant play. And also, it sort of accounts for Bone Mare because he should have enough damage to be able to push to the Edwin too and make this, so the swipe get through options. on that. But he's making it so that even through Bone Mare, He'll be able to double swipe the minion that gets the additional okay, health. I, I think Nairia knows what's up now, too. He looks at one attack and he's like, oh my, this is double swipe. What do I do? Well, I don't think you do anything at this point. From Nairia's perspective, you just have to make the best trades you can and just hope he doesn't have the removal to get through. Is there anything? Can he like attack and like, maybe forego some of the attacks? No. Or? I don't think there's any way. Just gotta go. And that's a full clear. Swipe on the bone mare. He's shaking his head. Yep, swipe on the bone mare. How did this get stuffed? This reminds me of the Defile turn from the Warlock game. One last push, Nairia gives. Frozen just had the removal, and he gets to keep his 6-3 around because of the Greater Jasper Spellstone, and it is not looking good for Nyria. Wow. The patience from Frozen to go with hang the Sprite. Hang on there. That's a, that's a Patches with a Bone Mare. He, he's got Malfurion. I mean, maybe he pushes through, but there's still a 6-3 on the back of this, and that Patches is going to go up to 6 health, so that Patches is going to die. Is that Bone Mare maybe for the Captain then instead? Maybe. Yeah, that's a good point. He actually went for that Bone Mare very quickly, and maybe he put it on the captain. No, he knows he's playing the damage. captain. Like, the captain's, I mean, it's got to come out at this point. Yeah. But making it more difficult with both swipes gone. Frozen does not have Wrath in the list. It's a card that's cut to make room for the Mark of the Lotus that goes along with the Vile Teacher. I so his removal is uh, more limited. So if he Bone Mare is the South Sea Captain, it would need to be a hero power or some kind of other minion damage or the second lesser Jasper Spellstone, which is the only other removal that Frozen has left in his deck. Nyria's trying to, to go through it and see if he can remember a read or figure it out. He's going to secure his damage. Yeah. I guess he realizes he needs, he needs the damage. I mean, not, Frozen's still not out of the water yet. I mean, this would be a trade at the le Oh, my. I think he can probably even afford to Malfurion this turn to get it online. Well, one thing... Well, hang on, hang on. So if he Malfurions and he runs into, like, a, like Elven Minstrel and a Vile Spine or something, like, is that is that too big of a problem? Like, it at this be. point, the, Frozen, the top decks are what he's got to account for from Nyria. And this is the hard part to remember. Did you remember what, what was left in Nyria's deck at this point? He does have a lot of whips. Uh, Nyria does off the top. He's got a counterfeit coin in the list. He's got a backstab, which really, really doesn't do much. Swashburglar, a lot of the times, is a whip. Tar Creeper is not a super aggressive card that he'd want in this position. And I think the big question for him here is, is it an armor up? Is you kill the South Captain, or you Jade Blossom get your Jade rolling again to have something to contest the board on the backswing? I like the dude. He's got to get these shades up eventually because eventually, as we mentioned, he's got to have some kind of counterattack. Oh, the worst draw in Nyria's deck. And I think that's the full recovery for Frozen. Counterfeit Coin is a pretty powerful card in the right circumstances. This is not But one right of them. there, <laughs> that's. That's when you forget every time that it was good for you and regret putting it in your list. I read down to 11. Frozen's one point off lethal. <laughs>
too risky to just go for it. <laughs> Ultimate infestation is face. Now, I'm gonna go with the Bone Mare, play it safe. Knows Nyria's out of resources. Frozen can maybe even put a read on that because that last card was drawn but not played. And a Fleam Elemental was played over it. That's so it. it obviously wasn't a combo card. I Nyria gonna fall to Frozen. He's gonna take the set three games to one. And move on. Team Frozen coming through. A lot of supporters for Frozen actually here. Uh, but a well-played match and a unique lineup from Frozen. I think a lot of people love to see that. A player that goes against the grain, that th thinks one step ahead of everybody.